uncanny valley is a common unsettling feeling people experience when androids and audiovisual simulations closely resemble humans in many respects, but are not quite convincingly realistic. Quadrupeds fall into uncanny valley for a lot of people too. Shows like Metalhead don't really help because they scare the crap out of us. They freak us out because they look like animals, but we know they aren't. And you can read up online about Uncanny Valley, but it's a very common psychological experience that people have looking at robots. What's interesting is you don't really need to be scared of a robot like this any more than one with wheels, because the only difference between this robot and other robots that are of the same size is locomotion. The Go Ones have legs instead of wheels. And the reason for that is that nature does not have roads. Humans make roads. That's why all of our vehicles have wheels. I've often said that robotics is the art of reverse engineering nature. Nature has had billions of years to develop locomotion systems, vision systems, things of that nature. And you don't see wheels in nature, you see legs. And so as robotics advances, you're gonna see robots mimicking nature more and more often. Hence, legs instead of wheels, uh, using vision systems instead of things like sonar um, for vision processing. So, Luke, why don't you talk about some of the sensors that are on this robot? Yeah, uh, so this uh, Unitree Go1 EDU is just chock full of sensors. Um, you have foot force sensors uh, for measuring the impact force uh, whenever it makes contact with the ground. Um, you have a suite of stereo depth cameras sur surrounding the robot. You got one here, one here, one here, and then one on the bottom. Um, it also has a microphone and a speaker um, in case you want to do any long range communication with it. Um, it has an IMU on the uh, master control board. Um, the battery itself is smart. It has overcharge protection, uh, overcurrent protection, those kinds of things that you'd expect in a modern power system. Um, and then you also have optional uh, 2D or 3D LiDAR. In this case, we have uh, a 2D LiDAR from Slamtech. This device is what Unitree calls the label controller. Uh, basically, it allows you to just walk around and have the robot follow you. Um, it does it through a couple of sensors, including like an IMU, so it knows which direction and orientation that you're in. Um, tries to keep the same distance and speed that you're at. Let's tell people where this falls in the line of quadrupeds, because you can get anything from a toy up to something from like Boston Dynamics. So I think it's good for people to understand where this falls in the line of robots. You know, it's not a toy. Um, we don't sell these as toys, although very wealthy people sometimes want to buy them as toys uh, because you can run it like an RC car. But the point of this robot is for research and education. And it's an extremely good hardware platform and you have options of 2D LiDAR on top as well as all of your sensors around it. And it's basically for researchers that want to do gate research and navigation research in quadruped robots versus something like a wheeled platform. Exactly. Um, and what's interesting about that is we're doing the, the programming and the code of learning gates, like learning how to teach a robot to teach itself to not fall over when it's running obstacles or going around things. And the code is actually getting ahead of the hardware. So what's interesting about these is that you have a rotational motor in the legs and it's being translated into a pliant joint structure. And again, when we talk about nature, when we have limbs, they're pliant and we have muscles that are stretched across from joint to joint. In robotics, we don't have electronic muscles yet. So what we do is we create uh, rotational joints and then translate them into pliant muscles. And so that's what's interesting about this robot as well is the type of motor that's in there. Yeah, so. That's the compliance that you were talking about before. Yeah. So it's fighting me a little bit, but look at that, it's even balancing. So instead of doing something like your traditional series elastic actuator, uh, which has been used frequently in the past, um, these have a relatively new kind of actuator. Um, it was proposed by Benjamin Katz in 2018 in his MIT thesis. Uh, a low-cost modular actuator for dynamic robots. Uh, basically, the highlights of that paper proposed an actuator that has high torque density motors, uh, a low ratio and back-drivable transmission, which allows for that compliance that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, it also has a very high bandwidth uh, for torque control, um, and it's very, very inexpensive compared to the servos or motors that were used on um, older MIT Cheetahs, which um, 
the motors that he proposed were used on the Mini Cheetah 3, I believe. Yeah. And so what that allows is that the, the pliancy of the legs, and that's why you see these robots and they get into Uncanny Valley because they start to look like animals. They, they're bouncy, you know, they can do backflips, they can do things of that nature. Whereas historically, if you tried to do that on a robot, you'd break the drive chain inside the servos. Yeah, um, the, I believe that the MIT uh, Mini Cheetah 3 was the first robot to do a full backflip uh, from standing. All right, three, two, one. Whoa! First try! First try! So it's a really interesting development in robotics, and we're really ex excited to see where this goes as it evolves. So digging a little bit into the technical details of the Go-1, uh, we're going to start with the onboard computers. There are five computers on the robot. There is a single Raspberry Pi, three single board NVIDIA computers, and those four are all connected to sensors, um, specifically the stereo depth cameras. And then those four computers are networked to the master controller which is the one that actually talks to the 12 leg motors uh, and commands them and then reads their states. In addition to that, uh, we have the 2D RP LiDAR. Um, it is the SlamTech mapper, and it uses the SlamTech SDK to simultaneously localize the robot and map its surroundings, also known as SLAM. Um, and using that technology, it can create this map. Um, this is viewed in the web application, but out of the box, it can also be viewed on the mobile application. So in addition to what's already on the robot, Unitree offers several secondary development packages. Uh, the first is the Unitree Legged SDK. Uh, this SDK allows you to do high-level control of the robot, which is uh, whole body movements and reading um, high-level state information about the robot. It also allows you to do low-level control, uh, such as joint-level control, um, commanding exact positions and velocities and those kinds of things to the leg servos. Uh, there's also the uh, Unitree ROS2 Real ROS package, um, available for both ROS1 and ROS2. Uh, it's just a wrapper around the Legged SDK. Um, it comes with uh, C++ and Python support as well as a couple of examples in both of those languages to help you get started right away. Uh, there is the Unitree ROS simulation package uh, that contains um, some description files and controllers for Gazebo to get you started working with the robot even if you don't have the physical hardware of it. And the last package that Unitree offers is the Unitree camera SDK. This is an SDK for the proprietary stereo depth cameras on the Go 1. It allows you to stream um, image and point cloud uh, data from the various uh, stereo depth cameras on board the Go 1. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about the Go 1 or any of Unitree's other products, let our support team know. We are also going to be doing a bit more deeper of a dive on the specifics of those secondary development packages that I talked about earlier in future videos.